and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another review recap of snowfall final season it's your boy lucas here with my guy najir i'm gonna ask you first what's going on with you this evening sir <laughs> cool because the only yeah, person you can ask is reason. me can't ask somebody else i'm all right man how you doing today <laughs> hey man i'm um i am a little you know what we're gonna go in because i read those comments last week i don't i don't normally go in the comment section i leave the comment section alone i went into the comment section this week and realize a lot of you all don't watch this show. And I say, you know what? We're going to have some story time with Uncle Lou at the beginning of this review. Because clearly, y'all are losing focus. I done heard we haters. I heard that uh, I hate <laughs> I hate Franklin. And I'm caping for Louie. And I said, wait, 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 wait. Like, I know. I let my partner get it off a little bit of his hatred for Louie. And me not correct him. But I'm like, I'm not letting y'all get this off on this episode so i said let me let me ask my guy how he's doing before we get into charnel's house which is episode seven of season six of snowfall but let's go back to why this is franklin's fault and i know it's an odd place to start at but we're gonna start there first first things first i saw some reviews that say it is louis fault because she stole the connect and that's why franklin's money was taken and then it realized it made me realize a lot of people don't watch the show or they think they watch the show or they're mesmerized by Franklin to not understand that Teddy actually made a decision to take Franklin's money before he made a deal with Louie. So I'm gonna let y'all know that now. Check out season five, it explain it all in detail. Why Teddy made that decision. I went in the comment section to let you all know that a lot of y'all forgot about Grady and y'all forgot that Franklin was making deals with Grady, which pissed Teddy off. And then you all forgot that Kane put a hit out on everybody. And when he did that, that's partially the reason that Teddy took Franklin's money. It literally had nothing to do with Louie. And some awesome people in the comment section pointed out that when, uh, Kane was giving his amazing soliloquy last episode that we didn't go into detail about that he told Franklin that, oh, by the way, thank you for giving up Louis' location to make this possible. This is partially why I say all of this is Franklin's fault. My partner clearly at times disagrees with me and I leave it alone for him to disagree with me because I know he don't like Louis. But for the rest of you folks, that's not true. Who <laughs> was supposed to be watching the show? Like I, I was so bothered. I said, "Let me go back and make sure I'm not wrong," because we we pride ourselves on the fact that we see these episodes and we jump on here, do reviews, and then we we just don't go back about stuff. We like in the moment because it makes the conversation more natural between us when we do these recap reviews which is it engages you all even more with us but the way y'all was acting i said i need to go back a little bit to make sure i'm not crazy and not back and watching i just went back in my notes and said wait a minute so all of this technically is franklin's fault literally everything he did from his relationship with Grady is the reason why Teddy doesn't trust him. It's the reason why Teddy took his money. It literally had nothing to do with Louis. Even going back to Louis and Jerome telling Franklin, like, hey, the price of the brick is too high. Like, either lower this price or we got to be out because the Colombians sell it cheaper. And Franklin telling them, hey, I worked out a deal with Grady. I can get you the brick cheaper. Teddy comes back after he kills Bra Grady and says, Everything stays the same. Or Teddy being mad because Franklin attempted to go legit and him telling Franklin, you can't justify the money that you've made here. Like, it caused a problem. And I normally leave stuff alone. But again, I had time on Friday. I wanted to engage with <laughs> our audience. <laughs> and boy, did I get a lot. But it made me go back and be questioned, like, is anyone else watching this show? <laughs> Because clearly I, you can't be watching this show. I I, <laughs> I I just think it's funny that I just think that, you know, I, I, I start to question, like, do anybody even watch the reviews here? Because, like, <laughs> hear people say that, like, the comment that got under my skin was the one saying that we were biased. So I'm like, but 
either one of us are even agreeing with each other. So if we're giving we're two agree. different perspectives, how can we be biased? Like that doesn't make any sense. But you know, again, for what the sake I realize of- is that for for great television like Snowfall is presenting. What ends up happening is, especially in this genre of of series, we understand from a movie perspective that they make you love the person who's supposed to be the lead, whether they're the villain or not. So it was it came to me three conclusions: either you all love Franklin so much that you're willing to overlook his flaws, or you hate women, so you're blaming Louis for everything, or you're just not remembering things that happened in the past i understand this track that happened with uh franklin and teddy started in season four it's a chance by season six you've forgotten the actual roles that led to them breaking up it's a chance some of you or clearly some of you forgot that franklin ended his deal with teddy teddy didn't leave franklin franklin got mad because teddy made a deal with louie but all of that happened after Teddy, who was Reed, decided he was going to take Franklin's money because of Franklin's deal with Grady. I think that I, I only point that out because of the way this episode starts off. It's highly important to understand how we got to this point with Jerome. It was even people blaming Louis for Jerome when if you go back to season four of Louis asking Jerome, are you OK with this? Down to Jerome admitting, I'm only in this for you. And Louis constantly checking with him like, are you sure you still want to do this? I'm only going to follow through if you're okay with this. We see what happened. We see the path that Jerome went down that led to his demise. And we open up this episode with Jerome being taken to the funeral home. We understood where he ended at. Were you surprised that they decided to open up at this moment and not possibly go back in the past to discuss the things that happened that led to Jerome's death? No, first off, I'm starting off by saying rest in peace to the great Jerome Saint, one of the greatest characters in this genre, Uh, one of the greatest performances. (laughs) And, um, you know, it's... Amir Joseph. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Joseph is, is the man and... Um, I, and I think uh, what a fitting ending for this character uh, went out like a G because that's what it is. And I know people are talking about what does OG yeah. mean. I'm not even getting into that. And obviously, I don't even want to get back into last week's comments. Uh, but hopefully you all are back this week. Bring that same energy, uh, whatever bit of, uh, the you know, whatever disagreements you all have, whatever things you, you love, you didn't like, whatever. Just get in the comments. Let us know all of it. We're here. We're here to stay. Hopefully you are, too. Um, but um I, I think, you know, as we try to put a bow tie on this series, absolutely we want to go forward. We don't want to spend any more time reflecting back with flashbacks and so on. You can story tell going forward without having to go back to kind of get us up to either the mental state of a character or just whatever it is with the reasoning of a character. Let's just go forward. So, yes, going forward with the uh, Jerome being taken to the funeral home, uh, really pulling all of the emotions that we already had last week and just mm-hmm. re-yanking them back out uh, was, was a good start because this episode was a lot about where would Louis mental state be. Um, yeah. and, and instead of them going back, having flashback moments of the two of them and their happy moments and then cutting back into this, like, sure, if we had another season or two, why not add that? But I think this go forward, just letting us know that Louis has lost it. And there's some really important things that have came out in this episode from Louis uh, to understand a lot about Louis, about where she's at mentally now, where she plan on going forward and and just trying to figure out what to do in terms of grieving and processing all. Uh, You know, it's it's going to be interesting to see how this character's arc in. Um, But no, listen, I don't hate Louis, but I also don't agree with the sentiments that is Franklin's fault. I'll talk about it later, only in mm-hmm. pertaining to this episode here. There's some things, but either way, um, if I have to side by a character's logic and all of this, it's absolutely sissy. The only person that's seeing both sides of this that probably needs to be on the show with us right now so she can uh, sit here and uh, uh, mediate uh, our disagreement in terms of who we believe, because I think she definitely comes from a fair and, and, and very 
unbiased lens in terms of how the family got to where they're at right now. And granted, she knew everything since day one, uh, both sides, both perspectives. And I think she's just here to just make peace. And man, what a what a what a conversation they had. But yeah, other than that, I, I just want to say it was definitely very important for them to come in, bringing us right back into the emotion of things, because that, that was the driving factor of not only this episode, but to for us to connect with, with everything that Louie had been through last episode. Let's not forget, she was very damn near close to being raped and killed and then ultimately losing her husband. So, like, at the end of the day, it's a lot that anybody um, in any circumstance probably couldn't be able to hold up to do. So now to see where does she go for is super important to start there. I'm going to ask you an important question here because I think it's something while it's revealed later on in the episode that it could be true. I think just, just to go back to the prior episode here, do you think Louis would have preferred to die than, than Jerome die? Yeah, I think, um, I think that is a sentiment, a sentiment of love. I think, Mm -hmm. I think anybody who ever really cared about anybody in their life will always say, I'd rather it had been me than you. And yeah. at the end of the day, the respecting person you you would assume, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, and, and, and to, to, to their perspective, they probably would say the same thing. I'd rather me than you. Um, yeah. And I think Jerome died in that notion of saying that, like, I love you, and I, as I mentioned last week, I think he was just tired, but I think he very much made a declaration of, I love you, and you know I will always come back for you regardless of whatever it is, and this is just how it's going to be. Jerome made no attempt to try to survive that. He made it very clear that he was going to come mm. protect his wife, and he was going to be done. Yeah. And I think, you know, he went out like a G. That's the only way he could put it, and I think that's probably why it affects her the way it is, because she knows damn well that he wanted to be out. He wanted to be out of the, the, the life. He wanted to be out of the town. But in true fashion of, of, of his declaration of love, he came and showed her, like, listen, even though all of that, I will always come back for you. And this is what I and this is mm -hmm. how I show it. So that's that's a hard pill to swallow, man. I I I, I forget the name of it, but I, I think the survivor's remorse. That's what she's dealing with. She's literally sitting here mm. thinking, like, why me? Because why him? You know, why did I have to live in order for him mm -hmm. to die? So, and that's a very, very deep aspect of of, of grieving um, that I think we're seeing is the driving factor for this episode. I think the the key part, especially with this episode, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting close to thinking the episode, the correlation of this last season of Snowfall is that everything is about to pass. So, the reason I brought up the the everything with the past that had to do with between Franklin and Louis is because this was foreshadowed two years ago that this would be the route that Jerome would actually go down. So I'm kind of wondering, are we getting to the point where we're realizing all the fears, all the worries that all of them had in seasons three, four, five, and it's coming to fruition in season six and it's a great way to to close out a series is to say we're going to close off these storylines but i think in these type of shows we don't necessarily always think about the ramification of closing off these storylines this yeah. was a close off of jerome's storyline but jerome wanted out when he opened up the record store in season four and he it, said i need to find something else to do yeah or so in season five when he visited his old house and Louis gave him permission. Like, Hey, whatever your dream is, you need to go and do that. Yeah. So, so yes, I agree. Yes. And no, I agree because yes, he wanted out, but I, I think the evolution of wanting out happened over the season where wanting out at one point felt like out of the game. I need a backup it's plan. Yeah. I, I want it's much like Franklin. I want a backup plan. I want a substantial way of living without having to deal with bullets, deaths, and all this other stuff. And then I think it got to a point where in this season, I think he realized, like, in actuality, I'm always going to be a part of this, but I really want to be out and I'm going to try to find a way to do so. I think he envied Leon for Leon going to do the trip mm. because I think that gave him perspective about how big the world is. This is a hood dude who's never left the hood. And I think that like 
he started to see how and, and again he mocked Leon and 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 I'm about to call her Gail because yeah. that's her after name, but he mocked uh Leon and Wanda uh, and Wanda, Wanda. And, yeah. and, and 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 we know how it is. I mean, we talked about this in one of our reviews about the crabs in the barrel mentality where nobody wants to see you do good. And the moment you do good, they start to shame that, like, oh, you, you, you want them college niggas, huh? Oh, okay, you think you're better than everybody else. But in fact, they want to go to college. I think this was Jerome at a point, kind of looking at Leon and them, like, oh, is that you go back, you go to Africa, you come back and preach and all that. But in fact, I think that was a little bit of a awakening for him to saying, like, I have got to find something. I think it was almost a point of emotional desperation i think before was a mental plan to sustain a a, a, a a certain amount of lifestyle and money to 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 be out of the game but to live the way you want to live but i think in this season i think it was a lot of like i want to be out but this is literally an emotional cry of saying i am done this is too much for me i can't deal this story. that's why he's been kirking yeah. but I'll, I'll say this and then we'll move on to the next part of this episode of why we're it's a possibility something's being overlooked and that thing that's being overlooked is when jerome decided last season he wanted out the game it had nothing to do with money okay it literally had him to do with him meeting with that uh vet who talked about ptsd sure. and sure. what it leads to so for jerome it never had to do with money but when he went to louis it had nothing to do with money. But that's it why I said it's with, a it's an evolution. Said, you mentioned you mentioned I, season four to now. I think that that's why it's been an evolution of it becoming more than just I don't want to shoot guns but, and see people die. I want yeah, to but emotionally be I'm free only, from this. I'm only saying that because he actually said those exact words in season five. I don't yeah. want to kill people. I don't mm. want to see people die. Yeah. The only thing that changed Jerome's mind about getting out the game after Louis told him, if this is what you have to do, that's perfectly fine. I'm with it. That's your dream. Was when Cain attempted to kill him, Louis, and Sissy. That's the only thing that drew Jerome back in. Other than that, Jerome. Oh, back in. Out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. At that point, Jerome was out. Yeah. Louis backed it. She said, hey, if this is what you have to do, because he said, I need to get my mind together. Yeah. This is, I'm tired of seeing black people die. Jerome was actually on the exact same wave at that point that Leon was on. Yeah. I, I will. But Jerome I will... wanted completely out until Kane attempted to kill them all because of whatever dealing, or we know what dealings that Franklin and, and Leon had with Kane that led Kane to attempt to kill them all. That's the only thing that brought Jerome back in. I want to say this season was him verbalizing again his desire not to be in this game. That's yeah, and all I, it was. And I and I will say that, like, I also think that his love for Louis also was a lot of the decision making, where like he kind of overlooked his own personal desires and for the sake of giving her her dream. And I think that was his focus at a point. And I think at a point. That he realized that while she wanted her dream, he also realized that mm -hmm. whatever bit of aspiration that he had no longer existed. He couldn't go back around the hood. He couldn't hang around his boys. You know, there was no space. There was no space or place for him at a point besides this fulfilling Louis' dream. And then that became problematic. And I think Louis, in love and probably respect, was like, well, do what you have to do and i think he actually said all right well, i'm gonna do what i have to do that i need to be up out here this ain't mentally good for me and i and i think that's a very one may say that to be self selfish another person would say that's selfless because he decided to prioritize his mental health over everything and it's a sad it's literally a sad it's a sad love story if you look yes. at this in no other way you take those two characters and remove everybody else as main characters it is a very Shakespearean love story with tragedy yes. at the end with two people that loved each other to the end who did not always agree. They had dreams together. They loved each other to the very better end. But at the end yes. of the day, there was internal problem. Now, listen, we understood Jerome's internal struggles. This episode, let us know Louis' internal struggles. That's why this episode was important. Yeah. I, I, all I'll say is go back to the conversation they had in season four and five. Because yeah. it literally pinpoints this down 
to uh, Grady bringing up that he they reminded him of Bonnie and Clyde. And Jerome's telling Grady, that story doesn't end well. And Grady saying, well, it may be you all. It may not be you all. It That's what I mean by it's all foreshadowed. But the next story up is Teddy. As I don't know who he was talking about when he said he's at the Sherman Oaks Galleria. He's not a threat, but if he becomes a threat, we'll handle him. I'm not sure at all who Teddy was talking about. And initially, as we see him on the telephone at the beginning of this episode, but then we get to see Julia. Well, wait, 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 because, you know, we we, we don't have to always do the work because everybody always got something to say. Mm -hmm. If we don't know, then we can predict and you all can comment. So who is he talking about? I think he's talking about uh, Ruben. That's what I think he's talking about. Could be. And I think he's CIA. Obviously, as they got the intel, we'll talk about them a little bit later. But I think he's talking Mm -hmm. about Ruben. But, you know, rather, and and this is my prediction, folks. This is not my fact. This is not the law. So you can get in the comments and say who you think it is without having Mm -hmm. to personally attack us. Everybody can have different opinions and different theories. We're not experts here. We just have a lot of fun in doing it in a good routine and production for you all. But don't be coming at us like we supposed to know. Because damn, I'm tired of folks like, y'all ain't never watching y'all again. Y'all got one thing wrong. Y'all are trash. Those, those, like, be, those, 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 be, those be the folks with no YouTube comments but us. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't mind those. I don't mind those folks at all. When, I, when we talk to people, we're only talking to people who watch every week, who tune into these shows. Because yeah. maybe it's a confusion on what you saw or maybe you've forgotten. Those are the only people we're talking to. I'm hey. never talking to somebody who got five YouTube comments. And it's only on our videos. Also, and all negative. Just, no, not if they're all negative. If they're all it's negative, a bur- it's a burner point, account. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I can't help you out. I can't, also, I can't, I can't also, help you out with your finster. Also, why we do enjoy you all's engagements for better or for worse uh, is also we should let you know that we also get these from the studios as they watch our stuff as well too and say we do good work. So there's that, folks, and that's yes. That is means a lot to get affirmations to know that the folks and people who put together these shows, watch these reviews yeah. and say they love the commentary. They don't get out on us about being right and wrong, although they got all the answers. They're just like, hey, hey we enjoy hey. you all bringing a perspective to it. And yeah. we encourage you in the comments to bring your perspective in a respectful way. Let's it go. Be some folks, uh, S. Johnson, dude, who disagree with me. But <laughs> when I say this dude is dope, the point that he articulated himself and I'm like, okay, cool. We can have a back and forth. This is who we talking to. We're talking to you all who want that back and forth to get clarity or who want to make your points known. We absolutely love that. That's the great part of this. But as I said, I'm not sure who he's talking about at Sherman Oaks because yeah, it wasn't I think it's Ruben. clear. I wasn't sure if it was Ruben or was it Franklin? Because I think it's Ruben. It, was, it's not Franklin. Franklin's a threat. Franklin it's it's, it's Franklin's a threat. Is the threat as the CIA say? It's absolutely Ruben. It's absolutely Ruben. That's that's my guess. Is Ruben, and the only other guess but, I would say is Gustavo, but he would absolutely name. Yeah, Gustavo, and that's why so. it was so many people. I've said I was not sure yeah, who it was. Definitely, but it's Ruben. The, the introduction of Julia again, who you all were great to point out that that is not his sister, but his ex-wife. Yeah. But this is where we realize that uh, I'm not going to say the name. Parasa. Right. Parasa. Parasa. Mm-hmm. Paris and, and Teddy have dealt with each other in the past. Yeah, we knew that, but Julia Clearly, knew is the Ju- interesting that's the aspect. part is that Julia knew and said, oh, you two are back together? That's shocking. We see Julia pregnant, which is actually brought up by Grady in season four when Grady says, you're just mad because she's dealing with other people. And Julia is pregnant at this moment. And Julia basically tells Teddy, like, if you don't return the money to Franklin, I will make sure things get bad for you. And Teddy asked her, what does that mean? She said, a public execution. What do you think about Julia walking into this moment, understanding the situation Teddy is in, also understanding that Teddy took Franklin's money and that there was no way he was going to give it back without her threatening him? All right, there's a lot to put with this, so I'm just going to sum all of this whole scene up. 
Paris are asking questions about Teddy's lifestyle in terms of living. And, you know, this is looking like a rental home. And he confirmed that this is a rental home. It's her mm -hmm. actually trying to understand if you got this money, why are you living like this is some type of Airbnb mm -hmm. or whatnot? So <laughs> while one moment after that, he basically tells Julia, oh, she knows everything. Well, do she? Because she's asking a lot of questions like she don't. So Teddy is yeah. still very much tiptoeing about who knows what information. But I can tell you mm -hmm. what, if the two of them, Julia and Paris, get to talking, everything's out. Because the two yeah, of them yeah. absolutely would know. And the reason why I, I, I can very confidently say that, because when Teddy's in love, we see him pillow talk. That's why Ju that, Paris shouldn't know anything in the first place anyway. Nothing and, at all. <laughs> but in fact, she knows about, let's just say, 80% of what's going on right now. But when Julia makes the threat of a public execution, obviously she's not going to kill anybody, but she's actually talking about, I think, she's personally talking about Aaron and exposing everything that Teddy has been yes. involved with, which is That's absolutely... the public execution. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, if I didn't know no better, I'm not saying she is, folks, because I got to be cautious about everything I say. If I ain't know no better, <laughs> she has to be on a priority list for the KGB because that's exactly what they're trying to do. <laughs> so I, I, I'll go. I mean, I'll go a step further here. Julia, the way she talks, she's part of the agency. She's be. not talking like a civilian. No, nah, not at Remember, all. Remember when she's she she used the words mule. Civilians don't say stuff like that. Yeah. They would say the person you're working with. She say, are you telling me your mule is doing all of this? Mule signifies understanding of the relationship between them two. Yeah. Understanding the relationship between what the agency does and people they get to yeah. work for them. Right. And I mean she talked like someone who was in either in she the wasn't, CIA. She was in the CIA. The question is, is she yes. actively in the CIA? But but as we know, and I don't want to go witch hunting. You can one moment be CIA, you can next it moment be the FBI, the, yeah. you can be the yeah. DEA, you can be yeah. anybody. But yeah, she's talking very much fair. And and and, and in fact, yeah. she understands that reputation is much more important than anything. But yep. let, let me let me do the math for you all here. Teddy's reputation is the reason why he's not a green badge right now. And yeah. in fact, he needs to clean that up so he can be back considered a federal employee of the CIA. I can't wait to be talking about the CIA scene. So she understands, like, listen, why you're like in purgatory here? If I go out there and tell me anything you do, because I and not only do I know you because you're my ass partner, but I know you because we in the same line of work. If I go out there and yeah. just start telling folks, it's a wrap. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. by the way, that will also probably give her a promotion because at the end of the day, you expose a contractor for wrongdoing. Y'all probably like, what am I talking about? Y'all remember Edward oh. Snowden? Oh, 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 oh where she at? That ends up her being killed. The, either I mean because it, we no, see no, no. the She's, other angle of that. We she, no no. We clearly see the other angle of that, and we see it later on in the episode with the CIA when they have that conversation, and he says, That's I don't want to hear no parts of it. I get that's that. your but, dirt to deal with. But but get listen, listen, listen to the hierarchy here. Teddy is outside the club. Julia yes. very much is a CIA agent. She never went rogue. So she's either employed or she's not. But she is protected because that's why Teddy's whole motive is to become mm. back federally employed so that he can be protected. She won't do, She won't be a threat of, of being uh, killed. However, because listen, possible deniability. That's why he said, I don't mm. need to know about that. But if Julia comes and says, listen, we got this person that's going rogue, doing all these other things. One that's going to boost her up. And that's also going to be them cutting all ties with Teddy, which is public execution. As I mentioned, y'all know who Edward Snowden is. Just remember oh. what happened when he decided to whistleblow for NSA. Some people got promotions, and then there was him that got <laughs> never to see again in the United States. <laughs> I, I, I want to say this, though, but we always got to pay attention to one key element here. Teddy's never an issue. They can cut ties with him at any given time. That's if why. If she says anything about what Teddy is doing and the operation, it leads back to Steven. If it leads back to Steven, you have to go. Or you can't be around anymore. Or, or because Steven ain't taking the bullet for anybody. And here's the key part. 
it's not just Steven taking a bullet. It will because not be the, the CIA knows what he's doing and because they, they're backing it. So if you, Julia decides to speak, what would be the easier solution for them? It, you're looking Teddy, at this. The, you're looking at this the complete get wrong rid way. Of her. You look. Li- you're looking I, at this the wrong way. This. This is. This is why Teddy has to clean up his act in order to be part of the team because they can cut ties with him, but they also can point and 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 deflect any bit of PR but, to that guy did it, not us. But, well, well, He's but, not employed well, with us. He's a rogue see, agent. But, and this is why the past is so important. Welcome back to the past. They literally had Teddy kill Grady for the exact same thing because Grady was making it too hot. If you think that they wouldn't say we have to kill Julia because she's making it too hot, they would kill her and Teddy. Neither one of them are safe. They can completely cut ties with him. But if she says anything, it leads immediately back to the organization because she can't tell just on Teddy. You tell on Teddy, you are telling on them. So they have to get rid of him and have to get rid of her. And we've already seen them more than willing to do it when Grady was completely running everything. And Teddy came back and told them, by the way, he has business dealings with Franklin that is going to expose us all. And they said, get rid of him. I don't think it's a chance in heck that Julia can then come out and think you can say something about Teddy and they wouldn't get rid of you also. I. I, d- I just disagree. I to the next subject. I've already gave my time on. I I think they would handle it a lot different here. I and and I and I you know I I say my it's piece. CA, it's CA. <laughs> we don't. I don't expect them to handle anything, but with blunt force <laughs> and get rid of people. That's what CIA. That's what the CIA does here. But next up is Franklin just telling Sissy that Jerome has passed, and we only only reason this is an important thing to talk about is sissy's reaction to franklin that is not a reaction of someone who thinks you're innocent in everything that led to jerome's passing that's someone who i think at this point with sissy and it happens later on in an episode where she's finally coming around to the realization that alton told her from the beginning which is he's the bad guy we can't turn an eye to a, we can't turn a blind eye to everything and act like what he's doing doesn't have repercussions. What did you think about just this scene when she asks Franklin, did Jerome suffer? Franklin says no. When Franklin reaches out to her to try to console her, it's as quick as humanly possible of her pulling away. And here I'm going to focus on everything else that happens with Sissy next. And that is with her leaving the shelter that was started by Alton. Um, I mean, she knew this was at some point it was going to be one of them. It's either going to be her son or her brother. Uh, and I think this is why she pride she really uh, prided herself in trying to keep this family together. Um, and, and this was mm-hmm. the fate that she ultimately wanted to be avoided. Uh, so yeah, she's hurt, and she's just showing it in the way that is her way. It's not Louis's way or or Franklin's way. Everyone's going through the grieving a little bit different. This is her sort of just have already made peace that she knew she was going to lose somebody mm-hmm. next to her. And um, I think it's safe to say that I think now she feels like there is nothing left for her here. She lost her husband. Yeah. She lost her brother. She damn sure lost her son. She she lost her son a long time ago. She loves him, but she knows she lost him. And I and that that ain't a physical thing. That is a He's so far gone, you know, it's what am I here for? And there was a point where Sissy had a little bit of a, uh, what's the word? A, li- a little bit of, um, not respect, uh, but but she she had, I guess, leverage in order to kind of give reasoning to to Franklin. Well, I think now she realized, like, man, that's, that's just all gone. The wrong word. I think we're thinking a different word. I was going to say responsibility for what Franklin did because remember her and Austin had that conversation. Sissy got to the point where she backed whatever Franklin was doing because she wanted something out of the dealings with Franklin. And I think we, we talk about it. We brought it up countless times because it's a highly important thing. 
whatever happened during that time jump that we're not still discussing yet, that's what changed Sissy's mindset completely with Franklin. I don't, we still don't know what happened during that time jump. Besides, we understood they were all at an all out war, and we don't understand if maybe that all out wars would change Sissy's mindset with dealing with Franklin, but clearly something changed. Yeah. And when that something changed, Sissy at times it feels like she gave Franklin the cold shoulder. Down to episode one, one where we bring or oh, episode two, I'm gonna say, when we bring up that when Vernique sees her and says, I'm surprised she even showed up to this. When it yeah. wouldn't have been a surprise for any past episodes that Sissy would have shown up to that. So I'm kind of wondering exactly where did that lead to. But yeah. next up we got uh Teddy again, and this is just a simple Wolf, I'm per, per, Parasa. Per, Parasa, damn it. With Parasa as they bring up their future together. Parasa questioning Teddy about the money, questioning Teddy about his fears, and <laughs> questioning Teddy in what he wants. And she almost lays it out. I'm giving you my heart here. You need to decide what you're going to do here. I know it's quick. It's very simple here. Maybe you fully... Or maybe I explained it already about exactly what this scene means to the remainder of this season between them two. Yeah, it's the same conversation they keep having every time. This is a di- yeah. like almost a dysfunctional couple, man. It's like she can y'all set expectations and then agree and then move forward. Mm-hmm. Every single episode, they're just like laying, like, are we together? Are we not together? Are we going somewhere? Why well, we got the money? What are we gonna do? So, like, you know, this did nothing for me. Nowhere near my notes on this. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I, I wrote this down in notes, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe it just pinpoints what their relationship is moving forward. Because they did talk about the money. She did almost talk about Teddy giving her half. I mean, Teddy, listen, the, the only thing is, Teddy, are you going to give me half of the money? Yeah. And him basically saying, "Is that what you want?" The only thing that this do that this does is validates that his ex-wife isn't crazy and she says he's not wrong here although you know sometimes she has a stick up her butt this she's not wrong here and i think if there's if there's one thing a guy doesn't like so two people he loved to agree with him being problematic (laughs) i think i think that that should hurt worse than anything else he's like fuck yep it's my fault. <laughs> so, and that's 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 where that's where it's at. That's exactly where it's at. So 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 next up we get sissy going to visit Louie. Here throws out all the illusions that a lot of people had that with with Jerome dying, the family would get back together. Louie clearly makes it here that that is not an option. As she blames Franklin for it. And Sissy tells her, we all played the hand in it. She says, while well, Franklin definitely plays his part in this, we all played the hand in what this is, including us dealing with the white man here. Do you think this was a conversation we would have this episode between them two? Yeah, yeah. Or did you think there was a possibility that with Jerome passing, we would get more of a... uh cohesive family aspect of no, this episode. This is absolutely the conversation they need to be had. These are um obviously going to Sissy is as good as going to uh the church and and uh uh what, what do you call it uh that they be doing in um Godfather Mahalo confessions yeah this is might as well be a confession at this point when you go to Sissy you have a confession uh because they have something in common and 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 that's what i thought until they started to speak and i was like oh well they do have some things in common but these are kind of different situations where sissy makes it very clear yes you lost your husband i have lost my brother i've also lost my husband so i understand what you're saying and then louis like well i no longer have anybody to care about but you do <laughs> It's like okay, like, yeah. but anyway, that was a threat. That was a clear threat. It was. It was so, a threat. I, I, I never we always that we, was a threat. We, <laughs> we always disagree about what a threat means because while it is a threat, 
I, mm-hmm. I, I, I tend to allocate something as a threat when it's more or less like an act, uh, um, where, where it seems to be an act behind it. Like, you, like in the sense of like, they're going to do something. This was more like a warning in terms of just like, just so you know, just in case you had any doubt, I don't care about anybody. And I think for the viewers, this is the first check on the chalkboard of saying, unhinged Louis loading up. Because now, yep. as we always say, the most mm-hmm. dangerous people in the world are the people who it's have people. nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah, she says, mm-hmm. I have no one to love, which means she has no reason <laughs> to have any bit of reasoning in anything she does right now. And we do see signs of that, but um, in the perfect world, I would hope she would have took this situation and talk with, with Sissy <laughs> to learn and to understand. Oh, you know what's man. odd? You know what's odd? You say no, but you know what's odd? That what she went and did with Scully is what I hope she would have did with Sissy. How did you figure out how to move on? I need that right now. In fact, she goes and gets some uh, South Central voodoo to learn how to move on. But I'm not to discredit got, Scully. Scully's been through some things too, major things. But I, I got something to talk about there because I said it's a highly important thing that happened between them two there. Yeah, but I, I just thought that I would have hoped that she would have went to Sissy and 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 and, th- and instead of having that moment of sending a sign to her saying like, listen, like I, I I have to figure out what to do or like where do I go forward? Like you lost your husband, which is, you know, I I I'm actually kind of curious what Louis' stance is about Alton and mm-hmm. what happened with Alton. Like, did you did you care? Were you concerned? Like. Is it a mystery to you? Do you did, did you ever ask Teddy about it since y'all buddy buddy? Or is it just like none of my business type of thing? Yes. But yeah, it's just, you know, I would just would have just assumed that she would I knew they were gonna have the conversation, but I would assume that she would have looked for her for peace, not like a almost like a, a chess match <laughs> of some sort. Yeah. But Sissy held it down as the queen that she is. She just said her things. Uh, Sissy is like the G Ma of the entire show. Like you know, like she 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 said what it she said what it is, and that's what it is. You know, so yeah. For people who confuse, Louis and Sissy are not close. Nah, this should pinpoint it to you. What what also is forgotten, and that's why I always say, especially for this episode, you're gonna have to go back to the past seasons to understand these relationships. Louie is closer to Scully than she is to Sissy. When 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 her and Jerome were going to kill Scully, the reason they didn't is because Louis said everything changed for us in that hospital room. Yeah. When, when Scully passed out. She's way closer to him than she has ever been to Sissy. The relationship with Sissy was Jerome. It had nothing to do with Louie. So for here, it makes sense that Louie would actually throw that threat. And the threat is not to Sissy. The threat is to Franklin. To let Sissy fully understand, I'm going to kill him. Or I'm going to go after him. Because I, I have nothing he, else to lose. It's it's a little... I, I see that still just a little different. I don't think she's actively wants to go kill Franklin. I think she's saying, I know you're tired of this. I know you wanted to cease fire. I know you never wanted this to happen. Either one of us wanted blood spray it here. But I'm just letting you know, if he ends up in my crosshairs, it's a wrap. Period. But I think that's she made that known last season. When she told Franklin, if I see you again, you're dead. Yeah, and again, I just felt like that was was more... I I, I felt like that... I felt like that was more of like a plan that she wanted to do. And I think once she ends up getting to connect and work with Teddy, I think she was like, kind of like, all right, he out the way. But then he gets in the way. It's going to be a problem. And then this little mini war happened. And then it's kind of like, now I lost Jerome. Now I'm just back. I, 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 I kind of see it as a seesaw thing with Louis at times, you know, same you thing with Franklin. Realize, uh, technically, her threatening uh, Franklin happened after she had the connection with Teddy already. Franklin had no Franklin no longer was a part of their business at yeah. all. And then when he she came made in. that threat to Franklin. It was a threat saying, I will kill you. She literally said, out of respect for Jerome, it's the only reason you're living. If Jerome is gone, that means that respect is gone. 
Once that respect yeah. leaves, Franklin's just another person. Louis yeah. care less about Franklin here. Mm. And I think that was her letting Sissy know that. But I think Sissy already fully understood that. When even when the moment you sit down with someone and they blame your son for everything, you kind of understand that they're going to kill him if they get the chance. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think that was at all questioned here. But next up, it's Franklin talking to Leon. And Franklin asking Leon for half a million dollars to get certain businesses in line. From an audience perspective, we fully understand what the business is that Franklin needs to get aligned here. What mm -hmm. I want to pay attention to is afterwards, Franklin and Leon have a conversation. And Franklin states, it's bad what happened to Jerome. But if he never left us, that wouldn't happen in the first place. What did you think about Leon? The way Leon looked at Franklin when he said that. What did I make of Leon when Franklin said that? When Franklin said that, Leon definitely gave a disappointing, disapproving look at Franklin that that would be your perspective on it. I guess he just wondered, that like, that? bro, like, after all of this, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think everybody's taking it hard, man. You on like on to the next. I, that that's I guess that's how I was feeling. I didn't even really peep Leon's look, but I, I guess that's how I was feeling. Like kind of like what the it be people like that though. Like, god what? damn, let things simmer, bro. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Next up is uh we we kind of already talked about it there. It's Louis Vizlin visiting Scully. The key part is her asking him, how did you get peace? And him telling her, basically, his girlfriend, who Franklin killed. <laughs> and Leon actually had a pandemic. We, we clearly Killing remember his that. daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of him saying, like, they won't allow, they wouldn't allow me to seek revenge here. We thought, that, or it seemed like this would give Louis peace. It clearly did not give Louis peace. At this point, Louis had her mind made up. Because I don't think she's thinking, I don't have the same ghosts who are hunting me that are hunting Scully here. I don't necessarily know if there's anything else to talk about here because they kind of laid it out Jeez. on the Lord's table. Jeez. Exactly. The, the, the what, fashion of, between them. The fashion of disagreement here with you. First of all, Louis is in, before you get there, just total rage. She's breaking down. She is just really struggling right. yeah. from the driving to I'm surprised she didn't hit the pole. I literally thought she was going to hit the pole and get a car accident because that's typically what happens under distress that somebody behind the wheel just crashes. But she gets out the car and, you know, lets all the Scully folks know, like, I ain't scared of nobody at this point. Shoot me, do what you got to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But going back to Scully, Scully has made spiritual peace to move forward. And he tries to provide an outlet for her. Um, as he says that I know they're still around. This is why I can't retaliate because that's not what they would want. And I think while she may not agree or disagree, I think she understands that she must continue to soul search for the very important thing that she says in the next uh, scene that we see with her is how did I get here? I don't necessarily, I, I do think in the sense of like her mind is made up, I think her mind is made up because it's one of those type of things where I, I, I don't know if she's actually looking for advice or she's just looking for somebody to talk to. This is absolutely a, a step in grieving. And I think this is portrayed and written correctly because if she had a cane and all of a sudden became religious with Scully instantly, it doesn't happen that way. Maybe next week, maybe a month. Maybe she exploited all of her options, and then she comes back and says, "Okay, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me have an open heart and mind to what you're saying and see if this works for me." But at this point now, mm -hmm. she's in total rage. She's absolutely breaking down. This is completely her dealing with grief in a way that is just combusting all over the place. She went to Scully. To be honest, it's gonna sound rude as fuck if this was actually like a real person, but she went to Scully House to waste his time. She didn't. She didn't want anything. Really? But That's what you saw. I didn't, she didn't want, she didn't want an answer. She just wanted to talk. It's one of those yeah. type of things where it's just like, I'm, I I need to be visible or I need to just hear something. I don't know, but I'm not actually looking for an answer to a solution right now. Cause I, maybe she don't know what the problem is necessarily emotionally. I, I, yeah. I think we are completely different because she clearly knew what the issue was. 
she went to Scully for understanding her pain. For sure. That's it. But for sure. her understanding, but she fully understood why she went to him. Because Scully would be the only one who she trusts <laughs> who have lived through this. And that's the key part. I, again, this episode, Sis. I think, is pointed in if you don't necessarily fully understand their past, you don't understand why she would go to him for this. I, I mean, she went to I, him I, because you lost your daughter. You lost the love of your life. How did you be able to move forward with all of this? I get and her that. But... Trying to get if maybe I can get peace for the way you move forward. Is that my way moving forward? And for a minute for Louis, I think it was up until the conversation her frankly have at the end of the episode. At I, that I, point, that changed everything humanly possible. But again, why I, I, I can understand that. Again, I think she's making stops to sort of gather enough information to kind of set back and put together a plan and strategy on how she's going to handle her grief. I don't think I, I, and again, speaking personally from dealing with grief, I don't think you necessarily know that one person has the answer, but you do consult with people who's been through similar things. All right, well, he handled it this way or she handled it this way. Okay, cool. These seem like safe outlets, but I need to kind of stir this together and come up with my own plan. Because again, that's why I think she went to Sissy to say, but not she only. Didn't go to Sissy. What? She didn't go to Sissy. Sissy and okay, well, the talk with Sissy and and Louis, I'm say, yeah, yeah. Sissy regardless, came to her. she yeah. did not reach out at all to Sissy. Regardless, that's though, something it's, they it's clear attention to. She yeah. didn't reach out at all to Sissy. Well, regardless, they have the conversation. Stop one, stop two is Scully. Stop three is the title of the episode. So I just think like it is a matter of her just trying to put things together. I do want to say one thing though, because you completely forgot something that was very important when. Leon volunteered to be there for Louis when all this was happening. He said, like, you know, do do, do we need to call uh, uh what's his name uh for protection and whatnot? Buckley. Uh, Buckley. Leon mm-hmm. thinks everything is still very much hot and shit's gonna go down. And she says the war's over, isn't it? She's even in the state of flux is not even knowing the current landscape of what's all mm. going on here. Is it? I, I don't think Jerome uh, Jerome. I don't um, think Leon is necessarily wrong to think that I, I, shit okay. could still yeah. pop off. With who? I don't know. There's no one else. I did. Louis, I don't Louis know. is a thousand percent right. I think this is the reason I didn't bring that up is because the comment by Leon made no sense. The war was with Kane. Kane is dead. The war is over. Hydra Louis was a thousand percent right. Hydra, no, see, it, it, it's not one because you literally had everybody who was with him at the warehouse, all of them are dead. There is no more war. I, I mean, it's easy to say that, but it's also for it's so easy for them to say, like, oh, his successor is right here or the next person. I, I, I get it, but, but like, the weird you part know. is Kane's successor would have been at the warehouse with him. And what if- so, oh, no, so, no. so Leon actually, having guns is a completely pointless then. Absolutely pointless. Matter of fact, because here's the weird part of it all. And this was established also in the past. Kane has no successor. He literally set up no one to lead anything for him. Yeah. The reason why Franklin and Leon was terrified of Kane is because it was just Kane. Kane's only successor would have been the brother that them two killed. There is no successor for Kane. So when Louis says the war is over, she's a thousand percent right. Anything with Kane is done. Yeah. So it made no it made no sense for Leon to make that correlation. In any war, it's technically Leon's at this point because he still got a war with D. Louis has a war with no one. Her and Jerome were only at war with Kane and Franklin. Yeah. So unless you're telling me that Leon is there to kill Franklin. There is no war with them at all for them. That's why I didn't bring it up because it it just it was a conversation that didn't make sense. And Leon yeah. and um, Louis kind of cleared it up pretty quickly. Like there is no threat. Like the threat is gone at this point. But next up is the conversation between Franklin and Vernique 
after Franklin's nightmare. And is this Franklin, or this the only conversation that I, the only discussion that needs to be had here, that nightmare that Franklin had, it was hinted towards that he possibly had this before. It's just a subconscious thing for Franklin that's going on that he's having to deal with? Or is just this him dealing with just Jerome? And the only reason I ask that is because grieving. she said, this is not the first time you've had this. There was no grieving beforehand. If this is not the first time he's had it, why is he having these nightmares? It's grieving for Jerome. It's that's it. It's because there's nobody like this that he that's been that close to him outside of I don't know who no, would be close to. But that's what I mean though, because she said this is not your first time having these type of dreams. Jerome just died the day before. If this is not his first time having these dreams, is this everything that Franklin's could, done in his past? Could, could, could be Alton. Could be Alton. I don't know. Could be Rob. Could be, yeah, it could be. Like that's what I mean. Like, is this I mean, is this a situation where we're getting Franklin living through the things he's had to do to claim I, that spot? I honestly am going to say I did not take the scene to be that deep. I just think this is this was a way oh, of them showing extreme. that this is extremely this deep because you. you I didn't take it as it being deep. I just took this as a way of them showing that Franklin's feeling something about what happened. That that's how I looked oh, at it. Man. Yeah, I, I saw this is actually a a problem between him and Vernique moving forward. Those because because I he's pay, having I night, pay way, nightmares. I pay way more attention to their reaction to the things that happen with Franklin. Her reaction to him even having this type of nightmare wasn't a reaction that said, "I understand you're just grieving your uncle." It was way more of something else is going on with you. This is not the first time you've had this. I don't get it. And maybe it is playing on the fact that she's questioning, are you dealing with your past problems? And is this stuff coming back to haunt you? Because, again, with this being the last season, it's never going to be as simple as saying, Jerome died, so it's fine. We have to pay attention that Franklin has killed two best friends, multiple people, to gain this spot. If this is not the first time having nightmares about death, about life, about losing people, about the actions that he's taken, that means that it plays way more to his psyche. So the outside image that we see of Franklin by the end of this episode is not the real Franklin. Nah, I, I mean, it shows, yeah. he actually, it shows he actually cares, which is a key part of this character because it never shows that he cares. He's on again. That's why I'm saying. That's why I think this, the scene isn't that deep because in terms of Jerome dying, he cried in the seat last episode. And then this episode, the only thing he did was have this nightmare. And I think this nightmare of him either reliving what happened of seeing Jerome being shot and it's just affecting him. Veronique saying this isn't the first time this has happened. I don't think Veronique is showing any bit of level of but only understanding that he's grieving and then that's it. I don't think she's digging for anything oh, deeper man. here i don't and actually and actually that wouldn't even be true to that character because she's been the most understanding about everything he's been through this entire time for her to kind of she sit here and dissect him having nightmares after he just lost his uncle i, I wouldn't want that type of company around me <laughs> but remember though because of that he's never hid anything from her he right he told so, her he had to, so he told so why he would this all of a sudden husband. be so why would this all of a sudden be something he's he's hiding be, because she, He's told her he had to kill his best friend. He's told her the actions that he had to take. If this is not the first time, that's literally telling her these are things you have to deal with. Jerome clearly is the issue now, but that don't mean there hasn't been issues in the past about the actions that you've taken. Or I think this be- is this is the growth of of the character of Franklin. It's literally attempting to humanize him to an audience and say that the woman that he loves is acknowledging that he has other issues. Or and or Jerome is not just it. Or or this is just simply the paranoia that he thinks Teddy's after him and he's having a nightmare about it. He grabbed his gun in defense and he could be thinking like, oh, Teddy's after me. I mean, because that's still a very realistic threat to him right now. But, then, but if that's the case, that's another thing because we've literally never seen him care about that. 
Literally, we see him going we, when he's awake. We literally see him going over the rest of the episode talking about killing Teddy with no issue. Yeah. If you're telling me he's having all of a sudden nightmares that Teddy could actually be attempted to kill him, it's that's a, a completely bad. different wrinkle. It's not a valid reason. It's, not, it's not a. It's not a. It's, it's not a unvalid reason. I mean, he did just kill my man dad. So like, I think no, he no, should no. be a I'm little bit paranoid. Not, but I said it's not unvalid. But I'm saying that that shows another wrinkle to the character. Mm-hmm. It clearly shows another wrinkle of Franklin. All I'm saying is that this stuff is attempting to show us a deeper connection for Franklin, which mm-hmm. is highly important. Because when you get to these shows, when you get to the close of the end, they tend to pinpoint you that this character is always this way. Yeah. They're going to show you Franklin is a hell of a lot deeper than just being a straightforward guy who can do these actions and not feel anything about it. Because Mm -hmm. when Cassandra was there, when he killed Teddy's dad, he did it with no remorse. Like he didn't care. If all of a sudden you're having nightmares about Teddy trying to come after you because of that action... That's showing a piece of remorse for the character, which is highly important in this last season that you show that Franklin actually understands the things that he's done and what it can lead to. That's the most important part to me. Uh, next up is Louis with her sister. We see just a quick scene of her arriving at her sister's place and her breaking down. Not much to talk about here. Just her bringing yeah. it down. I swear, again, another thing we don't agree with. There's not much to make here, but just for clarification, just because I we had to kind of come to this conclusion, this is Candy, who is uh, her sister from Little Rock, who is mm-hmm. uh, in town. And... Mm-hmm. Um, sure, no? it, yeah, and I think that by the episode title... Uh, which is uh, what again? It is Charnel's house. Charnel, which I'm going to assume is Candy is short for Charnel, just like Louis is short for Luann. Um, but I think, and we can just sum this up so we can just get them out of the way. Obviously, so, yeah, the two, the two of them, important. and, and the thing that was important between them two. Right, and and honestly, like while you know the the two of them having this moment of like confining in one another and understanding the loss here uh just getting a, a big understanding that louis has had a very traumatic trial child the two of them have had a traumatic childhood and louis um as she said that you know she tried to get away from a certain level of abuse and a certain level of just uh pain mm-hmm. and, and 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 triggers and all this sorts of different things that was detrimental to her, her mental health and i think that we get an understanding that like she's had a very traumatic childhood and just life period. And we get to see that side of her. And I think it was very telling when she says like, how did I get here now? Initially when she said that, I said like, well, that's her admission to guilt, but also too, I think that's like a reflection into somebody just really just sitting back and evaluating life, life, her life. She's seeing her life before her eyes right now. And I think that losing Jerome obviously is a big factor, but then starting to go back and, think down your 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 different loss and and different uh episodes of traumatic episodes that you had in your life i think it's just all hitting her and i think you know as we as we know when you have that bathtub scene that's that's really the moment of you just sitting back and just kind of taking it all in this this is the moment of uh when it's just kind of you versus the world and you just kind of face uh, the realization of everything that's going on, I think that's kind of what we got with that, and 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 seeing the, the banter between her and her sister uh, was just the right person for her to have this outlet and this conversation with the person that would have known since day one uh, about everything that was going on. Now, granted, it, it took a little bit of research to conclude that it was a sister because it wasn't totally sure. As it came off as if it was just a friend of hers, and I think that even if it was a friend of her, I think that's also establishing that type of relationship that they have. They're like, yeah, siblings, cool, but also friends. Their banter and how they talked about things gave that childhood friend that, like, man, we've been through some things, man. Like, they went they, they went down that whole nostalgia path and really reflecting back and, like, man, we've been through some things, man. I think um, I even jokingly said my friends, like, man, how did we get here, man? Like, for better or for worse, like, man, how did we get here? And I think that's just a moment of where they had. I think Louis was kind of looking back saying, like, shit's crazy, man. I cannot believe I'm right here right now, like, without my husband. I thought I had it all figured out. I thought we were all good, and I can't believe we're at this point right now. 
another discussion about the type of man that abused them before. And Louis brings up that this is the same type of man that she ran into again. It's a callback to a conversation between her and Leon last season. Mm. Complete callback to it because she literally brings it up when Leon tells her going after Kane is a bad idea. And she tells Leon, I fully understand the type of guy that Kane is because that's the type of band I've dealt with my entire life. All this was between her and her sister was a callback to that moment. And it's a callback to the point that in a way, she sees Jerome as that same type of man. Like, like that. this is why this episode is kind of odd in the sense that it's bringing you to callbacks from prior episodes because it tends to attempt to give you the mindset of these characters. So the moment they had this conversation, I literally went back to that conversation between her and Leon because it's literally the exact same conversation. Yeah. Here she talks about a man who abused her and her friend, or her sister, I should say. I'm sorry, I said friend. Her and her and her sister, and her saying, "I never thought I would be involved in this situation again." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The question is: Is the man she's talking about with the abuse? It's not Jerome. We fully understand that part of it, because when she brings up the abuse element, that's not Jerome. She kind of hints towards. The type of man, but it's you not might not sit here and say Franklin. You is you is, you about to be as who, bad as he comment people. I, no, no, no. But here's the weird part. She literally already brought it up. I'm not bringing up nothing that ain't in season four and five. Literally, it's the same conversation. If that's you, what I mean by if you don't if you don't necessarily go back and hear these conversations beforehand, they, they're gonna have a field they day a, with you on that comment. Go back. <laughs> well, great, great. Anybody want a field day? Please check out episode seven of episode five, <laughs> where her and Leon have this exact same conversation because it literally takes place in the same exact thing. And it is about a man who abuses his power over someone. Who do you think that's about? Clearly ain't about Jerome. I, I think, it ain't about Jerome at all. We I, we fully understand that. Eliminate Jerome. Yeah, I mean, no one was going to... Who the hell was going to bring up Jerome? Unless you're paying and, attention. Unless you're not paying attention to the way this episode flows by the end of it, who else are you coming up with a conclusion for? So, 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 so listen, if you're talking about the physical abuse, it's obvious who that is. But if you are talking about abuse, a level, I mean, but we, I mean, it, right. But, but at the end of the day, I mean, like, it's hard. It's, I don't think we're like, I don't think we can necessarily read between the lines to say exactly which way it is because it could be either or, it could literally be either or. It she can literally, literally be. Frank, she literally tells Franklin in the episode, "You're the devil." I got. She that. literally says that to him. I got that, like, but when you, if she's you speaking know, about, if she's speaking about her abuse, there's no way to tell she's talking about a physical abuse or a mental abuse, and I think that's why, about, I like, and it could be both. She was, I think she was clearly talking about mentally the mindset that that abuse put her in. She's clearly talking about that with her sister. She's not talking about the physical element of it at all. It, I mean, again, not I'm she said. It's the same mindset. It's the same type of guy. That's not a physical thing. That is only a mental thing of the way that person makes you feel. She's clearly saying that with her. But, with but her see, here in this scene. But that that's that's where you're 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 overlooking the important aspect of it. Is like while there is a physical aspect of it, it's always the mental abuse part of it that's way more traumatizing than the physical part. Anybody's ever been abused can say that. Like, it's always that physical abuse that these men rendered her helpless. She had no one to help her at that time, which could oh. go back to the conversation she had with Franklin as to, well, why did you come back and help me? However, again, oh. this is why I'm not going to sit here and go through it because at the end of the day, in something in a sensitive conversation like this, I would just say, if she is talking about the abuse the 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 uh, the predator should we say the 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 the, the jail the, the jail train dudes if that was what she was talking about in terms of she was, how well, was i as a how was i abused as a kid to get back into the situation i can't believe i'm back in the situation if that's what it is that's what it is if it's not that and if it is abuse of power and she's directly talking about franklin i think this one conversation to branch off into m multiple things at once 
I think it goes back to everything I said a, a minute ago. It's her sitting in the bathtub, reflecting back into everything that's happening to her. Like, how the hell did I get here? This is a lot. I was I was damn near raped, and then I got my damn near nephew mentally abusing me and his power and everything around me. It's a fucked up situation here. I think you're still focusing on the part that you see it as her her nephew. I mean, I'm just she gonna say that because that. you 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 she constantly would never bring that. that. But she has never brought it up since the day that Franklin threatened to kill her over money when he said, "If it meant killing you ten times, yeah, she, I, I would do it for my money." I wasn't, like, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to call Franklin her nephew as if she has any level of sympathy yeah. for him. She doesn't care about no, that I'm, dude. I'm, I get I'm it. I'm talking about it's the it's the power dynamic of it all. Again, yeah. um, um, the the key part is always going to be, especially in this last season of Snowfall, if you all are not going back to fully understand the conversations that they're having, you can't watch these episodes as singular aspects of anything because they're no longer that. They're clearly about conversations that took place prior to them. And exactly where those conversations are taking place now. So when I say Franklin, it's because when she talks about the power dynamic of that situation down to remember when he paid the $20 to choke us to see if we would pass out. And then they go to the other aspects of it. It was abuse of power. Wasn't the physical aspects of it. It was clearly the abuse of power. And how that ended up in a situation. Well, that's Again, what I said. That's why I said, like, at the end of the day, it, it, is, it wasn't so much. A, and we can go to the next subject because we're spending way too, too much time on this one. But again, that's why I said, like, it could be simple as that, like, she was damn near raped. And while the physical aspect of her being branded and all that absolutely sucks. But I also think it had a lot to do with that. She was a woman rendered helpless in a situation that how did she get back there and again that's why i'm saying i'm not driving a theory that is either one of these i'm open to believe that that conversation that she had with her sister was a, a compilation of all of that to say like the physical aspect and the mental aspect of the physical aspect was bad and then this other aspect were franklin and then obviously losing Jerome. All of this is just really bad. And I think that's her just kind of reflecting back, like, damn, I like how did I get here? I think it's I, I think it's damn that's a lot for anybody to want one person to process. And I think that's kind of where she was very overshadowingly explaining to her sister without actually getting into the nitty-gritty with everything, keeping everything high level. And I think that's probably traumatizing too to have to revisit everything that she's been through in the last fucking 24 hours dude. I think it's, it's, it's everything they've been through because her sister went through it with her facts facts absolutely facts yeah but next up is the visit from Ruben to Gustavo <laughs> now this is a situation that I never thought we would be in because we fully understood what Teddy told Ruben last episode but as long as you go away you live if you come back I'm going to kill you this is Ruben breaking in to technically Gustavo's house as uh, Essa Maria. I'm trying to say it right because I went back and watched episodes and I literally heard three different people pronounce <laughs> her name three it's, different ways. It's there. fair because Ruben should be saying it the correct, the Spanish way, and there should absolutely be an American way saying it. Not Look saying it. that one's I right heard, or wrong, I heard but Brady said one day, went way. I heard Gustavo said one way. I heard Ruben say it one way. <laughs> I've literally heard everybody take that X and pronounce it as an S. Yeah, Sia Maria. Sia Maria. Sia. Like yeah. it, it's Chi Maria. C Maria. But when he breaks into their house to threaten Gustavo and tell him, hey, I still need this plan. Gustavo still sees him as being able to provide him a way out and he lets him know as long as you can give me what I need to get out, I'm fine with it. And Ruben, in the end, threatening Gustavo and telling him, don't make me come after and hurt you if you attempt to double-cross me. What do you think about him breaking into this house, the response to him breaking into this house, and Gustavo attempting to still work out a deal? <laughs> Gustavo's desperate. His time has run out, um, so he's trying to do whatever he can. Ruben also is desperate, and his time has run yeah. out. So these are basically just two men out here just... Uh, Trying to figure out what what whatever got to do one way or another. Yeah, like it's it's it's, <laughs> it's it's a it's a necessary scene, but it's completely hilarious. I think the biggest thing is see Maria saying, "All right, 
it ain't looking like we're all rolling out together. So possibly we go and you don't know where we go because things exactly. are getting a little bit too close to home here. Even though Ruba's not even a threat, but whatever. But she can't tell, but she's doing the right thing. She's doing the right thing. Yeah. And listen, if if you if if you made it seem like things are good and we got this little bit of ball time, but people showing up to the house with a gun out of nowhere, nah, dog. And that she yeah. very adamantly got to that door to make sure it was locked. That was her basically saying, "Man, fuck this, man. I'm out. I'm out of this. Like, figure it out, Gustavo. <laughs> Me and the kid is gone." <laughs> As Ruben gets to her and she talks, and he says, "Well, oh, man, how you doing?" As he tries to make small talk with her, and she basically says, "You can't do that with the gun at my table. Like, you're, you're clearly a threat right now, and I see you as one because you wanted to present your way, present yourself to Gustavo in that aspect mm -hmm. as a threat here. I think this is again." Gustavo just needs to make a deal with somebody. He don't care who, at this point who the deal is with. Next up, we get Wanda and Leon as they talk. As Wanda talks about leaving the PJs, <laughs> and I'm going to combine this along with her conversation later on with Sissy, as Sissy offers her a place in one of the apartments that they technically own, and asking Wanda to take over the shelter full time. We kind of foreshadowed that this could be the route that Wanda goes down with Leon as she even brings up like I can imagine us away in Africa having our kids peaceful but I don't see you leaving here what do you think about this conversation between her and Leon and then later on the conversation between her and Sissy and Sissy asking Wanda to take over everything for yeah, her. Yeah, I made this very quick. Wanda's completely reasonable in what she's asking for here. You're sitting around here playing with guns, and we just came back off of this exploration of seeing the motherland and 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 sort of uh, you know, hopefully renavigated our life back into a, a, a righteous path. And you just mm -hmm. no, this ain't gonna work. I'm not living in the project. So listen, we can stay together, you're still my husband, but I'm out. And also sissy who already said at this point has really don't have much to kind of go forward with anyway but yeah the shelter can give wanda a lot of benefit in going forth from everything she's learned in africa so mm -hmm. um wanda got it together sissy looks like she's ready to retire and hang it up that's what we'll call it and leon wants to play with guns can't blame wanda at all for yeah. what she said to him get it together bro matter of fact this is actually a very smart thing to give him an ultimatum like this so that yeah. he can stop thinking he can just sit around here and playing playing with guns and all this other stuff like she's just going to forever just sit around and let him do all this nah uh -uh. it's just kind of interesting to see where we're going to end up with when you give a street dude an ultimatum it does <laughs> never work out positively in your favor but next up we get teddy reaching out to louie multiple times as he says you have not been answering our pages so we'll talk about the initial conversation between them two which is very quick over the phone of louis basically dictating teddy what time they're going to meet and then the important aspects of it and that is the conversation about franklin that both of them two have that's it that's the cop that's all that's it next scene that's literally it they both after franklin we done seen law lines been drawn this entire episode. Everybody's after Franklin. No one's after Louie. And then them two are after uh, Franklin. That's it. And they made it very clear. Like, man, you ain't answering calls. Cool. Meet me. Meet me at the spot. Meet sir at the spot. Says, leave me alone. But we do have a common interest in wanting Franklin. That's it. Well, Teddy saying he wants Franklin. Louis saying, if you need me to cut his throat, I'll do it after the funeral. Yeah. Not before. Don't bother me before this funeral yeah leave me the fuck alone like bro let, let this shit breathe in the in infamous words of jay-z and then the most book and then another aspect is right after that we get a different meeting between gustavo and franklin literally about teddy being a mutual enemy at this point between them two and about need gustavo the money and the, the papers paper. yeah he needs to he, he was focusing on the paperwork more than he focused on the money. <laughs> his said, time, his time need, is running out. I need the paperwork. But here is Gustavo telling Franklin everything. Mm -hmm. The DA has him under surveillance. The DA told him he needs to make this deal. The DA has Louis, But Franklin is clean at this point in time. 
what do you think about this conversation between them two and about them setting up this deal to set up Teddy at the end? Also, just as the audience, as you should know, we all knew this. This is just the scene so the characters can catch up on everything. So, um, yeah, I didn't I didn't take anything up uh, any more than that. Then the, the, the gaps to make sure that plot developments make sense. You have to have these scenes so that Franklin knows the landscape of the alphabet boys and what their target is how much information they have and how much potential trouble he could possibly be in and gustavo's like i need my passport and the money i gotta go that's it and also this is everybody wants teddy including you as franklin says you... everybody wants teddy including me <laughs> do you think this is odd for franklin for this to be his reaction to gustavo telling them that he technically is partnering with the dea Nah, Frank has been very, very much careful about who he deals with. I mean, technically, someone who's partnering with the DEA, who technically DEA would have under surveillance, and we wouldn't know it at any given time. I'm constantly meeting with you, and you're asking me for illegal passports. Do you not see that that's kind of odd that Franklin would drop his guard to even allow this to happen? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'd say, like, Oso's the only person he trusts. That's it. And that's very weird. And Leon. I've never trusted Rey Mysterio this much. And I've seen <laughs> him wrestle multiple times. And I th- I would never trust him with my life. The way he's trusting <laughs> Gustavo with his. It literally makes no sense. I've never went up to John Cena and says, I think you'll keep me out of jail. <laughs> like, c- certain things just don't make sense here. Next up is the meeting with with the CIA. This is important because they clearly (laughs) label it like, hey, they let him know, like, this guy, his mule, technically killed his father over the phone. Yeah, let me, let me, let me sum this up for you really quickly here. This is everything we also have been saying, even this episode Mm -hmm. and last week's. Teddy wants back into the CIA. Uh, What's his name? Is the middleman is Steven yeah. is the middleman in way of making that happen. As he says before, you clean your act up, you're good to go. We'll get you back in the office, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We know Teddy wants that because mm-hmm. security, not only like financial security, but like security, mm-hmm. security. And then the other guy, the superior, is like, ha ah, ah, as he should. By the way, this is absolutely the right thing. One, plausible deniability, and two. It ain't their concern. For the folks, I think, I'm not sure if somebody came at me about this. I could be making this up in my head. But for anybody who thought that the CIA cared about Teddy, again, this is the most clearest depiction that they do not give a fuck. And or, Steven or black might, people. Oh, he definitely called him a nigger. You're right. He um, definitely, and he used a hard ER. He did not say nigger. And, and, and make, it, make, it, <laughs> make it very clear that Steven, you're... You better stop playing around mess. because yeah, you 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 get this straight or you'll be a problem. That's all this is. And like they understand, like, well, you know, this Franklin guy killed his father. Let it be very clear. Watch that scene that there was no remorse for his father dying or no Not remorse for Teddy losing his father. They said nope. that's a they, they's like, oh damn, that's that's tough. Anyway, that's your mess. Don't bring that shit here. <laughs> get it together. I I, I, I don't want to hear shit. <laughs> let's mm-hmm. keep talking about what we're talking about here <laughs> well, welcome again to the ultimate callback because <laughs> i want you all to go back and see the way they treated grady when Reed slash teddy went to them about grady being the problem they treated him the exact same way and said if he gotta go he gotta go do you want to take over again these are the rules and ramifications of you taking over again. Again, this series is just cleaning up any loose end from prior seasons that you may have had questions about. Because this is the same CIA that gave the order for Teddy to kill Grady, who was a CIA operative also. Mm-hmm. No difference in the matter here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we already talked about uh, Teddy and Louie, but next up is Jerome's funeral. It's a lot of little... Sp- uh, bits to talk about here about conversations of other people having but what did you think about the overall effect and this is before Jerome and 
Jerome, I mean, I'm sorry, Louis and Franklin's conversation, but all the rest of the small conversations that happened around this funeral. Yeah, I'll sum this up really quickly, too. First of all, what was that whole look that Scully gave Einstein in the beginning? Because of the way they were guarding Jerome's body. Yeah, but like, that that's all you think it was? Partially. Okay, yeah, y'all, y'all can get in the comments and let us know your thoughts about that one. I, I mean, honestly also I'm, it looked like a bit of recruitment, but that's fine. Kind of eventually Einstein's not gonna want to be involved with Leon or D at this point. Also, I I, I th- th- honestly I thought like oh Scully's trying to sabotage something. That's the first thing I thought. Well, I thought you know, trying, remember, trying Scully to don't care something about something in the drink somewhere in there. Yeah, but, Scully don't care about that. Scully moves yeah. more weight than the projects moves. No, 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 no. I mean like Make it party time, some some type of uh, psychedelic or something, because oh, you yeah, know you know how Scully I, I, is I when he gets the Roman. Yeah, yeah I think I think he does that at, at happy occasions. He's not going to do that at a funeral. <laughs> and let's do the funeral. And let's do the funeral is not necessarily a thing you ever want to have experience. You don't know what this fucking voodoo master may fucking do. Okay, that's why I was like that look was kind of like, huh? Okay, cool. But anyway, um, y'all can give y'all jokes about that. Uh, one, I just want to say, Gail's been acting her ass off this season, and uh, seeing how emotional she was in terms of this, I honestly feel, I mean, I know there was, like, gangsters in the building, but I feel like everybody else is, like, showing, like, you know, these very stern faces, but Gail was definitely making very clear that she was hurt by this, which I thought was dope. Gail also mentioning that she doesn't want to leave Leon, and I think this is her letting her know, like, man, I hope this isn't our fate. We gotta go. We can't be around, because as much as I'm saying all these things, are you talking about you here? We all know at some point, if you're around, this is going to be, Gail's going to be Louis. As Louis said, man, Jerome was just here the other day. And now he's gone. And I think Louis, I think Gail, I keep saying Gail, god damn, Wanda is going to be like, Gail man, that's going to be me. That's going to be <laughs> me. But um, yeah, Jannard Gen- showed up. Uh, So from Chicago, good to see Jannard, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. Johnny, a.k.a. Chris D. Lofton. Um, and I think uh the only other really thing to talk about is Dion coming up to uh I about to, to say that was a that yeah, was a highly important one right there. Said, Did you get the job done essentially? You you handled that thing? He's like, hmm, all right, cool. So all the all the OGs, all the hood came out for Jerome. Um, so you know, everybody paid their respect. I, I was kind of looking around saying, like, who isn't here? Uh, but everybody came through. Do you think that, that should have been there. between D and Leon can lead to Leon finding that exit out that he talked about with Wanda. When he said, I need to find someone else to take this over so I can leave. Yeah. Or Dion backing down because he realized, well, if Leon's holding it down, I don't need to be the top person no more. I don't know. But we already know. We're not, no, we already know that's ain't the case. He's already clearly told Jerome that he's coming after Leon no matter what. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't think that ends all of a sudden because Jerome is dead. Yeah. Like, not at all. Street dudes don't think that way. I'm not going to stop because someone else died. Yeah. But last part of the episode, and this is a conversation between Franklin and Louie, where, and I'm going to highlight you and everybody else who gladly told me, oh, man, Franklin came back to save Louie when he literally told her Oh, because I'll do whatever I gotta do to get the information on Teddy. Oh, come on, bro! A, Don't you made a promise to me, bro? Did do not, not, do not he, sit no, here no, no, no. and tell half the <laughs> no, story, bro. What? No, no, no! I'm gonna tell exactly <laughs> what he said from him. You're only telling half the story. Telling this fable of oh, I've always respected women. We already know that can't be true because we already know what Franklin's done with women and everything else in this show. And but step from very. Ivory, I but I mean, Vernie gets pregnant. It, there ain't much he gonna do to her as long as she got his baby in. Her. But him saying, I respected <laughs> women and I was raised that way. And then Louis saying, Is that it? And he said, No, you made a promise to me. And I want to see that come through. We fully understand. And they have done a great job this season. And last season, a painting a picture for Franklin. He cares about one thing and one thing only. Getting his hands on Teddy and getting his money back. Yeah. What did you think about 
this short conversation between them two as it felt one person was attempting to get clarification or something even though i think that person also has their mind made up made up about what's the next step of the action that's going to be taken and the other person letting them know i'm gonna give you one reason but you know as well as i do the real reason i let you go or i helped is because you can lead me to my ultimate end game yeah i mean that's it you answer the question i mean like it's it, it's it's what we already knew from earlier in the, in the in the in the in the episode that like my man is definitely like well back to business <laughs> this this ain't nothing changing i'm about the business here and i think that he made it very clear to louis that like yeah i, I understand i lost my uncle you lost your husband but uh i need to uh yeah I need Teddy. I need I need to get Teddy. That's that's all that matters that's, right that's now. That's all he cares so, about. Nothing yeah. else matters to Franklin but Teddy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. any final thoughts? No man. Seven. No Charnel's man's house. Let's get to episode eight. This was a hey. a long review, but a lot of different it was, elements it was, to it. So and I don't expect I think, too much action going forward, but um I do expect some twists and turns, surprises. I know everyone's saying, how can Alton be dead? But I, I, at this point now, you said there's no more gang, so there's no more conflict outside of just them getting Teddy or them getting Franklin or them yeah, getting Louis, whatever it may part. be. Yep. But other than that, I don't I don't see bullets flying for that. I, I, and, and then Gustavo getting out, I just think that there's going to be some arrests. There's going to be some major developments. There's going to be some surprises. And I think that's what, that's what we in store for because they got to conclude this in a way. And I think there's a lot of different things you can theorize. Veronique leaving, her scheming with away with the money, you know, Teddy getting got, somebody flipping, somebody actually not being who they identify to be in terms of are you CIA or were you really, you know, FBI or whatever it may. It's gonna be stuff like that. Teddy's Teddy's ability to actually give up the money because he technically already told the CIA he had it. Yeah. You think they're gonna just let him give up seventy three million dollars with that much ease? Yeah. It's never yeah. gonna happen that way. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. I, I think this is we're we're getting to the home stretch where in all honesty, if you all don't start looking back as with any show entering this final season, if you don't start looking back and even conversations and certain developments with these characters, you're gonna be lost. Start looking back. Snowfall, especially in this episode, did a great job of giving you callback after callback after callback of conversations being had between these characters so you can understand why they're at the place that they are now yeah and yeah that that's going to be the most important aspect moving forward because i think as as my partner here said it's not going to be a lot of action in these episodes action is no longer necessary yeah. what you're going to see is plotting more than action the yeah. more plotting you see the more past that comes into play yeah, and people pay penance for their actions in the past. But it's been another great review of Snowfall. I know you all are gonna come out and try to either kill me or kill my partner. I don't care <laughs> either way. I will be in the comment section, loaded up. I got a full <laughs> clip this week for you all. Understand that if you if you ain't a true fan of Snowfall, don't get in them comments. And talk crazy. <laughs> Just say thank you for the review, or we go back and forth and have some fun, as we always do, <laughs> and we always enjoy with you all. But let us know what you think moving forward between Franklin and Jerome. Where where does that relationship lie, and what is going to happen? Do we think that Julie Franklin and who? Jer- Jerome is. Jack, damn it, yeah. Franklin and Louis. Yeah, I don't know how I get Louis and Jerome confused. And let us know where you think that relationship lies. Do we understand, or do we believe? That Julia can actually be a threat to Teddy moving forward. And is the CIA willingness just to throw Teddy under the bus with reckless disregard to protect the greater mission that they have moving forward for this war yep. in every way humanly possible? Because it starts off with one war, then goes to Iraq and everything else. But again, check this out. Check out any other reviews from Big Gold Belt Media. It's been another Snowfall review. Peace, people.